Coming up in this episode of TPW Weekly, I'll be bringing you all the latest news from IAPA 2018. That's right, the International Association of Amusement Parks and Attraction Show takes place every year in Orlando, Florida at the Convention Center, meaning lots of different theme parks and manufacturers all come together and share the latest from theme park tech. It certainly is very exciting, and I'll be talking all about it in this week's episode. I'm Sean Sandbrook, this is Theme Park Worldwide, and that means it's time to cue those titles. It's Wednesday the 21st of November 2018 and welcome to this week's episode. It has been an awesome week for Theme Park Worldwide. We've had lots of new videos go online here on the channel, including a vlog from Stoke-on-Trent Winter Wonderland, so check that out if you've not yet seen it. Along with that, our Planet Coaster episodes are continuing. There'll be at least one new episode of Let's Play Planet Coaster every week here on the channel. I know a lot of you guys enjoy that. And of course, we've had some other videos go online as well, so make sure you check those out. Along with that, thanks to all of your support uh, for voting for us as Vlogger of the Year 2018. And uh, yeah, I can't believe that we won that. It's fantastic. Thanks to the guys over at Ride Rater for holding that competition. And yeah, of 12 different theme park vloggers, uh, we were whittled down to the final two. And then thanks to all of your votes, uh, we managed to make it uh, for Vlogger of the Year 2018, which is fantastic. Of course, a big thank you to all of you for voting uh, and also to everyone that appears in the video as well. I might do these weekly episodes but of course you've got my beautiful girlfriend Charlotte behind the scenes who puts all the stuff together uh, and all the messages what you guys send in. Along with that, all the people that appear in the videos on a regular basis, that make us laugh, we have all them funny moments and going on rides with them, it really is great. What a year it's been for Theme Park Worldwide. And like I said a couple of weeks back, uh, it, next month in December, I'm gonna do a sort of year in review and talk about it all. Um, but yeah, when we hit 100,000 subscribers back in March, getting my YouTube plaque last month, honestly, what a year it has been for this channel. And 2019 has gotta be pretty awesome to top this year. I mean, we've had so many iconic things happen this year uh, but 2019 in terms of the trips and what we've got planned is going to be absolutely awesome and I can't wait to keep pushing the channel forward and also my second channel Adventure Sean as well so go and check that out. Anyway let's move straight in then to the weekly news roundup and talk about everything we know from the Orlando trade show of 2018. Let's do this. Before I go into the details from the Orlando event from 2018, let's just talk a little bit about the International Association of Amusement Parks and Attractions and just what else to get up to. Uh, now, it's actually headed up by Andreas Anderson at the moment, uh, who is the chairman. Uh, I was lucky enough to actually meet Andreas and do an interview with him earlier in the year on the channel, uh, so make sure you check that out. It was put on last month uh, and it's a brilliant interview where we talk all about IAPA, what he likes about the theme parks, and of course about Liseberg as well. So make sure you check that out here on the channel. Channel. Um, but yes, they held the Euro Attraction Show that comes back each year in different places. Uh, in 2019, that's actually going to be held in the centre of Paris, and I'd really like to get out to that one. Uh, they also held the show over in Asia, as they do every year. Uh, it's really good, and it brings all the parks together and uh, all the different manufacturers and things. It really is great what they do. Uh, and yeah, like, let's talk a bit more about the main show, what they do, of course, in Orlando, Florida. Uh, like I said before, it's held in a few uh, different different places. Uh, in terms of Orlando, it's been there for quite a few years, but that show has also been in different locations. I believe it was in Vegas once, New Orleans. Uh, they have moved it about quite a few years now it has been Orlando uh, but who knows you know they could still freshen that up and change it it does make more sense for it to be in Orlando especially with it being like the uh, the hub of theme parks the capital of theme parks out there isn't it with how many there is but uh, yeah let's talk about some of the main things from it honestly I could do a whole like two hour video talking about every little detail but I've sort of summarized some of the main things uh, and some things that I think are most relevant for me to talk about uh, about other projects and things what I've spoke about on TPW weekly throughout the year 
bit. Um, but yeah, let's kick off and talk about one of my favourite manufacturers, of course, the built uh, Wicker Man at Alton Towers. It is GCI, full name, Great Coasters International, an American company that have just come out with this amazing new concept. Now, it's worth pointing out that as far as we know, this hasn't been sold to a park. This is just the manufacturer that have come up with this and they've put it at the trade show and thought, right, uh, this is what we're putting out there. Come and buy it from us. Uh, in terms of who can go to IAPA and these trade shows, anyone can go. You can apply for tickets and pay to visit. Uh, obviously, theme parks go to look at uh, the new attractions and they, oh yeah, I like the look of that. Let's get in contact with them about the design and buying rides. You know, anybody can go. Or if you're just an enthusiast and like looking at the things and talking to manufacturers, you can go along to it. So it's great. It really is. Uh, and there was a lot of YouTube channels covering it, which was fantastic. There's so many great videos on YouTube. So I recommend checking those out. Uh, what people have put on from the event. Um, but yes, GCI have come out with this. Look at this image just here. Oh my God, finally, GCI are uh, catching up here with the Gravity Group that already do uh, hybrid coasters and, and roller coasters with inversions. And of course, uh, RMC, Rocky Mountain Construction, that have already done quite a few out there now. We've got the second one in Europe opening next year, Untamed at Wallaby Holland, uh, which is exciting. Uh, but yeah, this looks awesome. A couple of different images here showing this. It's a dueling uh, hybrid coaster that features inversions. Bear in mind, GCI haven't done inversions before. Uh, so this is their first concept but yeah like i said just it's, it might be sold to a park but i highly doubt it so far it's just sort of testing the water so to speak putting it out there and hoping that some parks are going to want to buy into it because it'll be their first one uh, with inversions that gci have built and how awesome does that look i'd like to see your feedback uh, on that creation from gci down below in the video comments um, but yeah certainly very exciting uh, yeah, it's just good to see them finally catching up because RMC are really taking over at the moment. There's loads of new RMCs opening all the time uh, and it's great to see uh, that GCI are finally thinking, yeah, let's catch up. Obviously, Gravity Group, they've done some fantastic rides uh, over at Kukulun. That's a, a brilliant ride, which is over in Ireland at Taito Park. I did one of theirs at Fun Spot uh, in Kissimmee. You know, there's so much what they've built as well and it's great to see that uh, GCI are thinking, right, let's do something with inversions, a steel and wooden coaster together. And yeah, I hope they sell this. I'd like to see one come to Europe. I really would. Uh, Park Asterix. Now, Intamin, at their booth, they announced two, lots of things, but two main new rides, uh, both for Europe. Yes, one of them at Park Asterix in France and the other one at Wallaby Belgium, obviously in Belgium. Um, so yes, this is very exciting. These two new coasters, we knew about them both. Like we did, it's not come as a big shock, like, all oh, right, okay, God, they're building these coasters. We knew that they were coming and we kind of knew what they were going to be in terms of uh, one's a hyper coaster. Well, it's not 200 foot, but it's a mega coaster, so to speak, from Intamin. Uh, and one of them uh, being a launch coaster, uh, and that's an asterisk. So let's talk about that one first. Uh, but now we've got the details of it. They've showed us a POV and everything, what it looks like. Uh, and yeah, this looks fantastic. Obviously, uh, Intamin must have obviously asked the park and said, look, we want to showcase this design at IAPA. Are you okay for us to do that? And they've obviously said yes. It's great publicity for the park. And yeah, this is going to be a 167 foot tall roller coaster with not one launch, not two, not three, but four launches. Uh, there'll be an initial launch and then there'll be a triple launch section in this as well. It'll reach a top speed of around 66 miles an hour and it'll be the tallest and fastest roller coaster in France, opening in 2021. I like the sound of this because France is not far away from us, you know, easy to get over there on the Euro Tunnel and ferry and stuff. Uh, we'll be out there definitely for the opening of this one uh, in 2021. The physical track length of the coaster itself uh, is 1,075 metres, uh, but the actual length that's experienced because of the multiple launches and reversing down certain sections of track is actually 1,361 metres. So uh, adding a few hundred metres on there because of that. Uh, this looks absolutely excellent. See a couple of images here on your screen of how it's going to look and a bit of a design uh, there from uh, Intamin themselves. Like It looks amazing, doesn't it? Like It looks low to the ground. It's got inversions. Uh, yeah, oh, it just looks fantastic. What a ride this is going to be. The fact that uh, one minute you're low to the ground, the next minute you're going through an inversion and then you're right up at the top of that massive structure. Honestly, I think this will be a brilliant coaster. One of the most intense rides out there. And I think that uh, the park themselves, the spokesman said, you know, we, we really liked Taron at Fantasyland, so we want our own Taron. Obviously, there they can't build it really high. This is much taller than Taron, uh, but height doesn't always mean better. But I must say, this does look like, in terms of the coaster itself, 
Park Asterix, they can do some good theming. It could be one of the best rides out there in Europe, if not the world, when this is put together. And certainly a very intense experience with uh, four launches. So there's no other ride in Europe with four launches. So yeah, very exciting for this one. Uh, coming to Park Asterix in 2021. Also coming in that year, it's going to be a great year that, isn't it? Uh, to Wallaby Belgium then. Like I say, also announced by Intamin is a new mega coaster, 164 foot tall with 3,937 feet of track. So it's a long coaster. Obviously, Wallaby Holland, the sister park, uh, so to speak, of, of Wallaby Belgium, they've already got an intimate mega coaster called Goliath. Used to be painted green, it's now painted blue, um, which is interesting, but it's a great ride. Uh, this set to be a, a similar style in a way, uh, but it's sort of like Intamin have took that and thought, right, let's go like bigger and better. And uh, this looks fantastic in terms of the first drop is very different with like a twist uh, onto this one that looks great. Uh, twisted first drop as they're calling it. Uh, there's a wall storm, which is another element. That's quite a funny one. Uh, and the world's first non-inverted cobra roll. So that looks quite interesting how that element's going to work. Uh, yeah, again, opening 2021. What a great year that's going to be. And obviously, again, at Wallaby Belgium, not too far away. Visited there along with Asterix. Uh, done both of those parks before. So yeah, I'd like to uh, definitely go back and see this one when it opens. Um, and even go and see the construction the, like the year before because it looked great and uh, in terms of when you're watching these big rides come up it's great to go over and see the actual uh, construction taking place once this is built it will be the tallest and fastest roller coaster in the Benelux uh, so obviously that's uh, what's that Belgium Luxembourg and the Netherlands isn't it the Benelux so there you go so I think this will be fantastic when uh, that opens and I look forward to uh, following that here on the channel uh, another big thing to take from IAPA uh, and the final sort of big thing that I think is very relevant to, to what I talk about uh, is Port Aventura's dark ride. 15 million euro dark ride in Sesamo Aventura, their Sesame Street area uh, that opened back in 2011. Um, so yeah, with this, uh, it's a brand new dark ride manufactured by Sally Corp. They've done all the uh, decoration of it around with animatronics and things as well. And this looks great, but here's a little uh, look here at a big bird animatronic, which they actually had in action and they revealed it. They had the curtain around it. That's what I love about IAPA. They put the curtain around things and do like a big, da -da -da -da, here it is. Everybody claps and uh, loads of people feel film it and stuff uh, and there was a few other things that were revealed like uh, nose cars for rides and stuff I know uh, Steel Curtain for Kennywood that was uh, they, they released the nose car a few of the rides from SeaWorld and stuff they had theirs revealed honestly there's so much to talk about but uh, so little time so to speak um, so yes, the animatronic itself will form part of the attraction. A six minute long dark ride, uh, but it's a 15 minute overall experience because it's got a pre-show, uh, which is going to be around nine minutes as well. So that's quite interesting. Uh, I hope there's more animatronics to come. It is going to be an interactive dark ride though, with some screens, but hopefully that doesn't mean it's going to be too screen heavy. I'd like to see a bit more in terms of physical theming and stuff around. I know Sally were responsible for doing laser raiders at Legoland, which isn't great, but then they've also done some great stuff as well like the one at uh, Wallaby Belgium actually their dark ride which is great uh, there so you know hopefully this will be a great ride I look forward to getting out to Port Ventura and seeing it at some point might nip out there for a few days next year it's quite easy for us to get there again from the UK you got to love Ryanair and the cheap flights haven't you but uh, uh, yeah it's very exciting stuff from my app but that's sort of my review of the main stuff obviously GCI with their big announcement which is probably the biggest announcement I'd say from the whole thing in terms of a new uh, concept and then you've got the big ride announcements that are finally for Europe, I mean, there wasn't loads of big ride announcements for the States, really. Uh, we're lucky, like, for Europe, to so are getting them two rides at Wallaby, Belgium and Asterix. And then, of course, Port Aventura with the dark ride. So it's very, very exciting. And I can't wait to follow all of these projects throughout this winter into 2019 and beyond, wherever they may open. 2021 and beyond. We'll be here at Theme Bar Worldwide. I've said this a lot lately, but we're only just getting started. So keep following the channel for all the latest from Theme Parks. And of course, here on TPW Weekly as well. It's now time to reveal what the ride was uh, in last week's episode. And this one was quite interesting. It's time for Guess the Ride.
So yes, there was a lot of split opinions as to what this ride was, and there was only a few people down in the comments on last week's episode that actually got this one right. Uh, I showed you this image just here and asked you to name what that ride was. Now I'm happy to confirm it was a roller coaster. There was a few people that thought it was a water ride, but no, it was definitely a roller coaster. Uh, well, not your standard sort of uh, coaster, this one. It's actually a bobsleigh coaster uh, from Mac Rides. Uh, one of the better ones that I've done actually, because this is actually La Trace de Horror at Parc Asterix in France. So there you go, it also follows into this week's news, doesn't it? That wasn't actually planned because obviously I didn't know it was gonna happen last week, but there you go, it all follows together. And uh, so there you go, well done to anyone who got that right, just for fun. Now, I'm going to show you another image just now on your screen uh, for you guys to guess for next week. Uh, as I say with this section, there's no prize or anything. It's just pride what you get. Um, but there you are. If you look down below in the comments on this video, see what other people are suggesting, thinking, oh, has that been said yet? Uh, so, yes, let's have another one, shall we? It's time for this week's Guess the Ride. Here we go. So, where is that? Uh, what roller coaster is it? Maybe the manufacturer, you can tell by looking at some of the uh, design there. Uh, so, yeah, like, let's look at this. It's clear that it's a roller coaster. Um, so yeah, what is it? I'd like to know down in the comments below and I'll reveal it in next Wednesday's episode which is going to be on location. We've not had an on location episode for a while uh, but the next two episodes are going to be on location. One from France, one from Germany. Uh, so you've got one from Disneyland Paris and another from Europa Park. So make sure you stay tuned for those in the next couple of weeks here on Theme Park Worldwide. So yes, welcome to Merch Paradise, and this week I've got quite a large item to share with you guys. Here it is. Oh, you're thinking, oh, what is it? Um, so yes, here we go. It's basically this massive bag just here. It's like a sports bag, what you go to the gym with or something. Obviously, I don't go to the gym, but, you know, I, I've got it anyway. I was actually given to it from a park, so I didn't pay anything for it, and it's probably a good job because I've not actually used it. Um, but yeah, it's really good. It's just a bit too big for taking to a theme park and stuff, isn't it? But uh, it's good for going away, I suppose, when you stay in hotels for a couple of nights and stuff. Um, but yeah, Marathon bag. It says more forces in uh, motion just there as well. Of course, they're now known as Mara AG, uh, but they're responsible for building rides such as G Force, Traitor Manor, uh, Spinball Wizard, Alton Towers, Dragon's Fury, Chessington, them sort of rides, you know. So there you go. So a big thank you to them for sending me this. I've had it for a few years now, but uh, I've just never shown it in a video. So not that I can remember, unless I did it in the previous merch video I did. And there is more merch videos to come, so stay tuned for them. Oh, knock myself out with the bag. Uh, coming up this winter um, but yeah it's just quite a nice little uh, item to have that there's nothing on the back or anything but yeah I think I'm going to use that this winter in fact I might take it on my trip to Disneyland Paris next week The time has come for the final section of this week's episode. It is, of course, interact with me. If you'd like to send in a picture for next week's episode, whether it's a photo of you at the front of a ride, an on-ride photo as we're going into winter, maybe you've had a festive photo on a Ferris wheel at a Christmas market, get it sent in. Uh, whether you've got a birthday of your friends or family as well, get that sent in to us via the usual methods, either on Instagram as a private message on the Theme Park Worldwide account, or also on our official Facebook page. Just search Theme Park Worldwide wide and we really appreciate it if you were dropped us a like whilst you're there as well. So yes, starting off this week then we've got Craig with a 13 on ride photo from Alton Towers. And next up we've got Kelly and Javi on the whip just there so thanks for sending that one in. Moving on, Ethan and Alex on the Smiler just here at Alton Towers and Jacob's up next outside Stealth at Thorpe Park. Up next, Daniel outside Colossus there so thank you for sending that one in. We then got Vicky with an icon on ride photo from Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Thanks for that, Vicky. Then got Offy with an infusion on ride photo. Are they brushing the teeth on there? <laughs> Thanks for sending that one in. Uh, we then got Luke, Charlotte, uh, Lily, and Freddie at Thomas Land there at Drayton Manor. Hey, you had a wonderful time. Moving on then from that, we got Harrison with a rock and roller coaster on ride photo. So thanks for sharing that one. We then got Lauren and James at Universal Studios. Looks like you're having a good time there. So thanks for sending it in. Matthew's up next on Icon at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. And then we've got Chris and Vicky at Extreme Screen Park at Twin Lakes every year. It's great fun, some really good attractions, and we definitely recommend uh, going there and also checking out our vlog from Halloween. Moving on then, we've got Brody with a roller coaster cake. That is awesome. Again, I say this every time when people send cake in. Where's my piece? Should have sent me some. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for sending in your photo. I'm only joking, by the way. I wouldn't steal your birthday cake. Uh, anyway, up next, we've got Kenny and Jack with a hyperspace mountain on ride photo. So thanks for sharing that one with us. 
And then we've got Cosas International uh, with loads of us there from Theme Park Worldwide. So thank you for sending that one in. Up next, we've got Joe uh, with a Wicker Man drawing. Wow, look at the detailing on that. You've really got the colours right on that as well. And believe it or not, I'm actually quite good at uh, art myself. I got an A in art at school. Uh, and that is absolutely awesome. So well done. And thank you for sharing that one with us. Wow, really good. Up next, Dan and Kelly with a Blackpool mug collection. So thank you for sending that with us. And then we've got Joshua with an Icon hoodie just there. Uh, also from Blackpool Pleasure Beach. So thank you for sending it in. That's all for your photos. Let's look at the special occasions that we've got for this week. Starting off with the birthdays. So a huge happy birthday from me and Charlotte and everyone at Theme Park Worldwide to Clayton. Uh, Claire and also Gian as well. Uh, so happy birthday to you guys. We've also got a uh, happy wedding anniversary uh, to Matthew's parents. Hello Matthew's parents. I can imagine this situation. He's probably, you don't normally watch the channel and he's dragged you to sit at the computer now or on his tablet or something uh, to watch this. So there you go. Happy anniversary. Uh, and also a very special happy birthday uh, to, I'm not too sure how I pronounce this. You know what I'm like, my pronunciation with uh, rides in other countries and names of people and stuff, but I'll try it. It's Marrero. Uh, so there you go. Happy birthday. You're probably sitting there laughing now. I hope it's made you laugh on your birthday uh, and hope uh, you have a great day. Anyway, that is all for this week's episode. Like I say, get stuff sent in for next Wednesday. Going to be on location at Disneyland Paris and then a solo trip out to there in Europa Park and then doing a group trip with Alex and our friend Brett as well, who we met over in the States. Uh, he's actually coming with us over to do a Europe trip in December to Fantasialand and Eftalin, which I think is going to be hilarious. I think we're going to have a really good laugh, so make sure you stay tuned for the vlogs from that. And there we go. I'll see you next Wednesday. Keep watching our videos here on Theme Park Worldwide. Lots to come throughout the week. Brand new vlogs from Hyde Park Winter Wonderland the land uh, and so much more thank you for watching and that means it's time to cue those credits